Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, we just finished up that big western there, and I thought it would be fun to, uh, like I told you in the last video of that western, fun to do a, a real quick little seascape one, because I get so many uh, requests for seascapes, and for me as a selling artist, seascapes are very popular. And so I have a smaller one here. This is about 20 inches by about 13 inches uh, board here, and so it makes a really nice, uh, you know, what we call basically a widescreen format for a painting. Uh, they're really kind of nice and becoming very popular right now so this is a quarter inch sheet of wood what i have here i gave it two coats of the uh, heritage uh, multimedia canvas prep medium and uh, that makes just a really nice uh, surface for you to uh, to paint on and uh, i have my normal colors out here these all the colors that i use here are going to be listed in the video description down below so you'll see everything i use but i use the heritage multimedia colors here and all the links and everything are there for it as well, along with the uh, uh, fusion brushes. These are a fusion brush that I designed there, and some of these techniques that I use are specifically for these types of really soft brushes. And again, links for everything are down below. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I found a nice reference out here, and I used to spend a lot of time, all of my summer vacations down in, in Australia for years and years, and I just loved, loved it down in Australia. And so, this is off one of the videos of a place down in Australia, and I have two photos here just to show you, you know, when you print off, you know, those of you that are um, in our memberships and stuff, I put these reference photos over for you, but your printer can make a difference. Now, here it's not too bad. I used actually the same printer, but I printed it out of two programs, one out of the Adobe program, one out of my Windows program, and you can see one is darker than the other. So, you, you know, how you print, Make sure you adjust it to what you like. But what was really interesting, and hopefully the camera can kind of pick it up, on the lighter version here, you see more yellow in the horizon line color, and here you see more violet in that horizon line color. So the two programs are different. So if you find, a, you know, if you got a reference photo, you know, just the reference photo for the color balance and stuff for your printer but also try a different program try a windows program try an adobe program for printing that photo out and you will you will get some differences that might bring you a little closer so i like actually the slightly lighter version one of it up here so i'm gonna put that right up here for me to uh, kind of reference as i paint and uh i'm also going to put up the darker one up over here just because there's a few things that I like about it. So I will put that up and, and uh, you know, I, with, that, with that Western that's back there on this side, and if I move out of this way, way of it a little bit, it's on this side here. You see how you, you're drawn in towards that horse and rider, and that's what I told you in that Western. This kind of drawing in is very popular as far as landscapes and everything. Now, bringing the viewer into the painting, and that is something that, you know, Richard Smid uh, and other uh, impressionist landscape painters uh, did really well. He, he painted in a style, his own style, which was fantastic, called the Grand Manor. Um, but we draw it in, and I can see that into this. This photo here we'll soften down through here we're going to draw the viewer in right into this area of the painting here maybe even as far back as that back little peninsula might be kind of fun we'll do it kind of quick and we'll have a bit of fun okay let's try it all right so my board I have that out my colors I have that out I'm going to take a one inch fusion brush here and a little bit of extender this is the open medium by the way just to tell you that too this is the Matisse Dervan open medium and I put a little bit of that out we'll get into some water and stuff here and I'll explain exactly why but let's go into uh, let's create that water line here first and so when I look at that well oh one other thing got so many things I want to tell you <laughs> but I have my value scale out here in blue as well and all the I again the links for all of this kind of these value scales that are free you can get them over on jansenartstudio.com okay jansenartstudio.com 
It has a listing of all of our videos, but there's a, a, a key in there called supplies. Just click that little tab and the value scales are all there. You can download them there as well, there for you. Okay. Jansenartstudio.com. All right. So this is, we're going to keep this horizon line pretty high right up here. So the sky's going to be reduced and I'm going to want to have a, a bit of a blue violet and What's really nice about, you know, having these value scales, especially like this, I can run this right there and I can see that that is right between a, a three and a four as far as value. Now, acrylics dry just a touch, a touch darker, so which means we want to get it up to a really kind of a good number four in value here. A violet, a blue violet that is about a value four because it'll dry down you know, might even go up as high as a as a five or so. So that's a good four that would dry down to a three. Uh, we might, we just might go ahead and go with that. And I'm just going to take, this is the thing you see me do all the time. Matter of fact, let's use this side over here. Okay, and just an idea of that. We'll go up right about to uh, where that, where we want that horizon line. So I want to go up probably a good uh probably a good leave about a quarter so about 25 percent of it right up through here that i'm going to leave that and we'll just draw this horizon line right here and i got that just a bit here so we'll go over just bring this over just a touch here so we'll draw that horizon line right there with this and we'll just bring this down a bit so that's going to be the horizon line and then I'm going to put that little peninsula and there's actually two that you see there in the reference photo so we'll bring we'll bring in two now I'm just a touch more violet than what it is there but we're going to bring in some blue green colors and that'll be that'll work pretty nice so that's my horizon now the the sky up there right along that horizon is really a good eight an eight to a nine so yeah, it's going to be an eight to a nine. So let's lighten this up and it's more blue green. So we'll get rid of the violet. We'll go more blue green up here to probably pretty close to a nine here because the uh, color will darken down. So we'll go up quite light here to about a nine. And let's just come now. You could use your, uh, you could use that uh, um, edge of your, the ruler just on the other side to do that but I'm not going to and then I'll just let the dirtiness of my brush here kind of come in through the sky I like that we're gonna bring in some other colors as well but you know like the the uh, the yellows and stuff like that that's gonna happen here but we'll just toss on some of this sky and see this the dirtiness see all the and this is why I tend not to over mix in my in my uh palette I like the colors to come off like that so I you get kind of an interesting sky let's go back and redefine even though this is where that peninsula is going to be here let's get that out of the let's just push some of this in right now and we'll just carry that light up a bit right through here and maybe some x motions and stuff like that so you get some what we call the atmosphere into the sky now Let's add that yellow. Now you can, you don't have to add this yellow, but that yellow is really interesting uh, on here. And so I, I kind of like that. Gives this kind of turquoisey look to the sky here. And I kind of like that right up through here. In that, and you know, down in Australia, you do see that. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There is, and I, I told some of you about it in other fun paintings, I like promoting other artists and I, I really like promoting their channels, especially ones that paint different than me that can cause your, and that's a good thing. We're all artists, right? And But we all take inspiration and ideas and stuff from others. And there is one guy, his name is Richard Musgrave Evans, E-V-A-N-S, Richard Musgrave Evans. Um, and he has a channel here. He has about 45,000 viewers. His his whole color knowledge and the way in which he uses colors, and he paints a lot of seascapes, Australian seascapes and uh, landscapes and stuff like that. 
and paints it with a huge palette knife, puts out hundreds of dollars worth of oil colors and just tosses this color everywhere. Really is an impressionist and really throws these colors around. Uh, to all of you people that like to paint with me, go watch him for a little bit as well. He is amazing with his colors and his knowledge and how he approaches it. And like I always say, we always use it like, you know, all of us artists, we use each other to um, help change each other's brushes. Not copy each other, but change each other's brushes. And he does a lot of this yellow and, and stuff up into the skies. Uses a big palette knife, goes real quick. It's a lot of fun how he does it. And so those of you looking for some inspiration, go watch some of his stuff. It's just uh, it's just amazing. He has a whole channel and lots of videos. I think over 200 or so videos you can watch him. But uh, let's go on now. Um, we have that back peninsula. And so we'll use some of this, both this violet and this color right here. Let's gray that up. Let's look, it's a little bit more violet. And then we'll gray it slightly with just a bit of that burnt sienna. And so we want to come, so that was my sky, that was my water. I want to come right between the two here. And let's come out and push. We're going to bring it in right about into here. So let's just come out like this and bring this little guy right down in there. Matter of fact, see that little bit of white that's right there that I left there? I just might leave that because it looks like little waves on the shoreline there. So let's just put a little more architectural interest into that back heel just by moving our brush around a bit. Sometimes just use it at a little bit of an angle there, see? And you can give, real quick, you can make that look like it's a real, a, a back one. Now, Let's toss, even though we're gonna cover this up, let's toss just a bit of that. Take it out of your brush, toss it all up in here. It's just good color. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some of that tan color. And this is again where you can look to your value scale, hold that up there. It's about, right in there is about an eight or so. So we'll be looking for a nice tan color, some, some, uh, yellow oxide some burnt sienna i like a little bit of green sometimes in that that helps tone down that burnt sienna and it and then you add that white to get up to right around your value eight or so and this color we're going to probably change quite a bit but let's just bring this sloping bit in right into here some of that violet will help this tone down a little bit as well bring this right in right down to there nice big slope of it here like that okay and like I said I'm gonna push this out a little farther so I can have some more difference there so I'm gonna probably stop this right about in here and let that little peninsula of that stick out a little bit further we'll pull I want to use good calligraphy pulling down here we'll give that down stroke to the to the hillside here so I want to add that and then Let's get a bit more green burnt sienna, a little different kind of a tan color here. We'll put in some, some uh, slopes and some shadows here that'll go right along into, in, uh, give us this feeling of this coming down like that. That'll, a little bit of interest, a little bit of interest. Let's take some of this and just tap in now. I promised you and, and that they will do some fun things with the knife. So let's do that. Let's just grab, this is our, this is my Liquitex number five knife. I use this for quick landscape paintings quite a bit. I'm just gonna model the color. See, I don't wanna mix it up. Well, this is what I call modeling. It's not mixed up. I'll just grab that and we'll pull down in this slight angle here and tap that edge a bit there like that and that'll put on a little bit of that interest it's a little darker right back up over here it will have a little violet in it we can add that but you know we're going to we're going to try to work here a real quick painting that is more impressionistic so you know that that'll work they're pretty nice now let's take some of this let's go a bit more yellow and a bit more light right up along the top up there maybe a value or so higher and this is what I always watch so see 
you can see my color here, yellow with a little white. And this is my original color. Whenever I mix, I don't always mix up absolutely everything. I always leave a little bit of the original. So I can look right here, what's the difference between these two colors? And I know I have a, a nice difference there between those colors. And that'll work pretty nice for me there. And I'll just grab some of this and pull some of that down and push a bit of this light color. Maybe pull that, there's a big pole of this coming down that way. A nice big slope of it. Maybe I'll add some of that. That's up to you. You know, the, you don't want to do it too much. You'll take it to one color. And you want, so you want to leave some of these little value, value differences because that'll give you, and this the mo motion of that knife and the smooth painting of these acrylics, that'll give you some nice color variations in there. And that's what we want. We want it uh, easy as possible there. So that gives you a nice. Now, this one has more violet in and around there and some darks, and we'll probably get there. But um, not yet. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to leave some of that, um, some of this dirty color in here. You can add the open medium. Now, the open medium will make the color dry slower. It will also make the color a little more transparent, but it's going to allow me to get some more color interest here. I'm going to uh, take some yellow and some white, and I'm going to maybe a bit of, just a bit of violets into this and see how that violet grays that, okay? Let's come over here and look at this beach here. You'll see really that real violet color that's in there, see? And um, so we're gonna wanna preserve that, okay? And then we're going to um, want to get this light color. So it has just a, a bit of that violet in there. As a matter of fact, one of the things I'm gonna do for filming, let's do this. Let's move my reference photo up a little higher here. Not quite that high. And then I should have done this at the beginning, so. But I'll put that up here. And then what we'll do is we'll bring the palette in right into that area right there. And so you'll be able to see on the same screen everything all at the same time. I, I like that in the videos whenever I can do that because then you can see the palette and the color going on. So I want to have a bit of this. This is going to be a, a, bit, a bit dark, but that's okay. So I'm going to want this as that beach coming in, okay? And this is my one inch. I'll add some light into this as well. Pull some of this out. That gives you different calligraphy. See how you can get a different look to it, a different calligraphy to that beach, right? Let's go just a bit light, some of this color. Now we're gonna switch over to a violet in a minute, but I'm just gonna go ahead and toss some of this down. Whenever I work these areas and these colors, I like to work them over each other. So we have this open medium. Let's even add a little extender. Why would I do that? It thins it out. So it slides over the surface here and puts a coat on the surface really quick. So I can just take some of this, even with some of this extender here, and thin it out. It's like you're doing it with water. You know how the water thins it out, but the extender will also cause it to dry slower. So, you know, that works. So now I've got that idea of that beach that's right up here, and we're gonna continue this up into this area here as well. A Little bit of this coming out into here, we'll control that. I'll explain that in a minute. So we got that beach in there, but we don't have this violet here. So let's get that violet over there. And violets can go really, really uh, bright, really quick. So we'll put a little green and a little burnt sienna in them. See how that grays that right out? And then we'll grab a, a bit of our light color. And then some of these yellows, those will also soften it out. Let's add a little open medium, maybe a little bit of the extender in there as well. And let's push that violet. See that pretty violet? And see where I, I see sometimes I leave, as I'm, as I'm pushing this on, I'll kind of model it around. In other words, I'm not not perfect do 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 strokes like this i'm using some x motion and some other motion so i leave what we call little highs and lows and so sometimes you see a little beach coming out there stuff like that that kind of stuff is very important now there's also the violets there's also a really light blue violet and rather than using the 
brush, let's go to the knife here for a second. And so we'll grab some of this blue, a little bit of the violet into that here, and we'll lighten that up. Let's just grab that, lighten this up even more. Might have to put out a little more light, a white, here if I keep this up. Right in there. So you look at that to this. See, that's what I'm going to be looking at. I can look at the two right here. We'll add a little open medium to this. This will slow it down, but it'll also make it just a touch more transparent, which works really nice in this type of painting. See, and I can put some of that violet in. You can see it right there. I can soften it out. I'll put some of this on first. So I'll push some of this on and I'll push with the knife. And then if I want to soften it, I lift the pressure with the knife, pull it in the direction that you want that calligraphy to go. In other words, I want it to come down this way a little bit. Now, if you want that softer, you can take your bigger, this is a big fusion brush, and you can just pull through it a couple times and soften it. If I'm painting a pure impressionism, I might just leave it, you know, and, but if I'm uh, painting for softness or something, I might, I might soften that out a little bit more you have in there. So these colors that are here are going to stay nice and wet for quite a long time, okay? They're going to stay nice and wet for quite a long time. Let's go grab some dark, one of my favorite colors to make in a landscape is, and, and to make it mostly everywhere <laughs> is the pine green and the burnt sienna. Just beautiful colors. Uh, inside of here, there'll be a bit more violet in it. But let's start out kind of with this one here. And we'll pull down and tap down a little bit of that dark. This is where I want the viewer to kind of come in here. And so I'll use the edge of my brush here, or brush my knife here, and just kind of push that right to that point of that knife. Why I like this little knife is it has such a nice little point on it that I can direct that final little bit of color there. And let's move this up and around a little bit over here. So I'll push and I'll drag a bit, to, but I'll pull down slightly to give that angle going down to the beach. I like that. Soften that edge right there a bit. And uh, we'll put some more of that right down up over here. Sometimes I'll put, I'll use my finger to push an edge, to soften an edge there. But I wanna, I wanna get this variations of color stuff here. Jump over your knife, jump over some of that background. So you don't cover up completely here. So you leave some of these, what we call holidays of color where that, that color is not presenting itself here. And we'll soften that out just a bit and see it just as a, and I can, I could copy that even more, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna drag some of this right along here, create that maybe a bit of a secondary look to that right there. And that's a, that's a nice look. That's a nice look in, into that painting there. I don't need any more. I could build, you know, there's more right up there. I could develop that even more, but I don't think it needs it. So I won't do it. <laughs> that's the fun part. This is supposed to be a fun painting, right? We just put this stuff out here. Look how this is dried. See if you got it, what you like. I want to have maybe just a touch more light, maybe even a bit of my bright yellow here, right up here. And just a hit or two of that right on there. And sometimes I'll leave it like that. Sometimes, you know, that nice broken color, because that's just good interest. Sometimes I just touch it with my finger or you can use your brush. Depends on what acrylics you use. These are completely non-toxic. So I go ahead and touch it. But if you're using paints that are not, then use your brush. Don't use your hands. Never use your hands. Only use your hands when you know exactly what it is you're painting with. It's not a good idea to touch stuff. So I'll put a bit of that. I like that. Just a touch more there. Just a few little marks of that. And that just gives a bit more interest there. Okay, now we'll come back down here. And, you know, you've seen me. And see, look at this. Look at this. See how wet that still is? This is all wet. And why is this wet? Because I put all that open medium in it. But over here, 
it's dry. See, it's dry. There's nothing going on there. So where you put that open medium is going to be wet. Now, I don't worry about that because we can change all of that. But here we have this dirty brush. Let's just put some, let's just put some color in it here, right? And let's just take some of this color, some of this beach color, and let's put it right there along the water. Just act like you know what you're doing and start to bring those colors together. Now, if I want to soften an edge here, how do you do that if that's dry? How do you soften an edge? And it all depends on your acrylics. And this is what I answer this question all the time to people. Depends on your acrylics. And different acrylics are made to do different things. But if I rinse this out for a second, see, and I take this, I take a little bit of water and I push it, that water right there against that edge, a little dirty water too. But see, I can re, I can reconstitute this blue. See that? I can, so I can blend back into this if I wanted to and reconstitute because the heritage paints, the heritage acrylics do this. They're designed to do this for a couple hours to soften back and do that. So I can do that, but I can also do it with other colors. But so this is why I never worry about some of my edges or any of that kind of stuff. I'll soften them, you know. Maybe I want to take a bit of my blue violet, some of this soft edging color, I'll add a little extender, but extender will not reconstitute the paint. Extender keeps the paint wet. So this is the extender. It keeps the paint wet, but it will not reconstitute it. But I can use, I have a little water in my brush, which will help me ever so slightly here. But let's just take a little bit of our violets, maybe a bit of that yellow, a nice, and let's just run it right by that edge there. And see what I'm doing is I'm softening that back edge. I'll push the water up just a bit more. Soften that back just a bit. And that pushes that horizon line back just a little further. Now, I should probably, and let's just go a little bit lighter here. So I'll push light into it, you know, back to the what? The value 8 or 9 that I use there. And you're painting what we call the edge. I'm watching the edge of my horizon line and I'm straightening it out because I went a little funky there. But I'm going to blur it out just a bit. And that, that blurring it out there just a bit is going to give me more visual depth in it. Now let's just take a little extender, maybe a little open medium, some of this color. And we'll toss it in through here. This is that horizon line color. We'll just go ahead and toss that in, use it up in our brush, and let that just break up through there like that. Okay, and I can push it. See how that blends in? Why does that blend in right like that? And I can do that because I put water over that area and it's reconstituted my acrylics. That's how I can do it. So it's one reason why, you know, different, like I say, different acrylics do different things, guys. And so if you have an acrylic that you're buying in your country or whatever it is that you, has a lot of vinyl in it, those are not designed to do that, to reconstitute. You know, I've, in my years, I've designed four different acrylic paint systems for different companies. And some of them I designed to dry really fast, and some of them I designed to do this, to what we call tear a hole in it, to, to move it back take it back and so there's different ways to do it now before I leave this I'm going to take a little bit of this violet maybe a bit of this burnt sienna and some of this color just a little dirty in my brush here and just lightly let's go a bit lighter here just lightly add just a a bit of that yellow picking up back here in my back edge of that hill back there. See, it, it's, you can see just a tiny little bit of it and a dirty little finger there and leaving that ed little edge of white makes it look like it's a little wave there, see? So sometimes leave a little edge of that white, especially if, where you may want to have waves or something like that. The rest of them here will draw those in. Matter of fact, let's do that. Well, let's first pick out a base color. So you can see right into some of these colors here, there's a sandy color. So we got to make that. That's that tan. I should have put some of that in a little earlier, but you know me, I love to mix paint, so I don't mind doing it again and again. Here, let's take a little green, a little burnt sienna, and some yellow oxide. We'll add some open medium. We'll then lighten it up with a bit of white till we get to some of that tan color. And let's push a little bit of that. 
right out in through here we can play some of those blues i'll just take my paper towel i love to paint the water with the paper towel as well a little bit of that coming through now see what it is right here as you can see this is a riptide coming back through here and it's picked up the sandy beach and it's depositing it back through there and uh not a good thing to have when you're walking on the beach as a riptide but it is uh kind of fun to uh to paint those now my white is i'm gonna put out a little more white but it's almost gone here so We'll try to squirt out some extra here. There we go. Put out a little more so I can paint the water and stuff here pretty easy. But I'll put that in. And let's grab a good blue like this. This is a turquoise kind of blue. So we'll start first with our thalo blue. Let's add some open medium to this. This will keep it wet. Let's see where we are with some of just some open medium and turquoise, I mean this phthalo blue and white. That's real, real close to what I had there. Real close, maybe slightly darker. Remember, it will dry darker. Let's push some of this in, right up in here towards this violet. Some of it right out through here. Just kind of, just every once in a while, glance up to there for in, for ideas, but don't copy it. Don't get into a copy mode. You, you, you won't enjoy the painting if you spend all your time trying to, to get a copy out of it there. So don't do that. Um, I'm going to pinch wipe this brush. We'll put a little extender in it, and I'm just going to pull through. That extender will just add moisture to my brush and help me move some of the color through here. I want a little bit of these violets in here. Some of these other pretty colors in here as well. I want that sand to go up into there. And I want this color right up like that, right up along that beach and stuff there like you see. Maybe a little more deeper, slightly darker color here. Let's add a little open medium. This keeps it wet. I might, you don't have to, you see me paint other, a lot of other seascapes where I don't keep it wet. This one will do because it's kind of fun today. Keep it a little wet, painting into the wet edge, a pure all prima painting here and painting into that wet edge there. Now I'm going to pinch wipe that brush. Let's take a little open medium, some of that Violet, matter of fact, let's just get a slightly different color, a little more violet and a little more white, dirty brush here. And let's just paint that edge right there a little bit more. So I drag, now phthalo blue is a super powerful color. It will overtake your painting really, really quick. So when I work this violet, and violets are softer than the phthalo blue. So I've got to really kind of get a nice heavy load of the violet right in here if I want it to overtake the blue, see? And so I've got to keep that in mind. Now see how much blue I picked up in that? I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. But I'll just lightly, I'm just going to go touch, and lift off, and we'll come see the blue I picked up. Pick up another little load of that. Go touch, lift off, and we'll hit it back out here again. Lift off a bit. You want to touch again, but you know, if you touch again, you'll pick up that blue and drag it. See, I'll pick up that blue and drag it out here. I don't want to get it all out there. So you don't want to go back and forth too much here, you know. So I can pick up my brush, I can pinch wipe my brush. I can even go back to my bigger brush here and I can pull across and around like this just because this is all wet and soften that edge out and give that blurry look to the water if I want to. There's all kinds of things you do, but a really big soft brush is something that works nice on your, you know, in your, in your tools that you have as an artist. Okay, so let's grab just a bit more blue, a bit more blue down up over through here. I don't want to go that dark, Dave. I want to keep this kind of soft right out here, so I'll run through that. Let's put a little violet in it and just lighten that up a bit. I want that viewer to come in here, see? So I don't want to get that dark down. Even though you'll see it here, I want to paint out that dark. I want the viewer to come into the painting. We want to draw in to the painting here. So we want that viewer to come in just a bit. Matter of fact, I might even just, just lightly take some of that off. Just 
light brush movements there right onto that beach and concentrate, we'll concentrate the water right up here. All right, so let's get a, a bit more blue here. We're gonna start with our knife. I'll show you the knife. You've seen me do waves with, with paper towels, with my hands, with my knives, with my uh, paint scraper, with my brushes. We'll do it knife again today. We'll take some of the blues and we'll push back and forth. This is gonna give me the motion or the movement of my water there. Let's come down, maybe grab just a bit of that violet in that. So it's not mixed. See what my knife looks like? That's not mixed and that's just gonna look great when I push it right down here. It's gonna give movement to my water here. Don't push it too much here, but it's gonna give you some of that nice movement. Let's take some of this violet. We'll put that onto the, the knife and we'll run that through here, crossing back and forth. Sometimes I'll wipe the knife and this is what I call the blending part of it. I push down slightly, slower, smaller movements, pushing down and that blends the colors together, softens the color. So I wipe the knife and I push down slightly, holding it flat, hold it flat and work the knife. Sometimes I'll wiggle it up and down a bit, but I'll slide it side to side like this. That creates the moosh, the motion, or the motion <laughs> of the water in and out, okay? Now, before we go too far, let's, uh, let's grab a little more vi uh, this blue right up here. We'll paint that right up towards the rocks right there. Push that in, a little violet right on the edge and see I added that open medium now so this is staying really nice and wet. Let's get a little more darker blue right up there. That works really nice right there. That's just pulling you right in. That's where I want you to go. Now we'll take some white. We'll come right down here tap it into this. I'm going to add some open medium to this about an equal amount because that's going to help me make this transparent. Don't mix. Tap it tap this together sometimes like this. Now see what happens is if I mix, I get one color. See how I get one color? I don't want to do that. I want to take this and tap this through so I get this, this modeling, okay? So on your knife, it looks like it's very much modeled and that's what I use on this edge to start the ocean here because it'll sometimes come out white and sometimes come out that blue and then I'll pick up a little bit more. Let's just tap the edge, more pure white here. And I'll just use smaller little, I'll roll my knife sometimes on the edge, sometimes the top, and that'll help push those waves on, the white cap of the wave. So I start first with this mottled color, and I can push that around like this to create the wave. See, I can create the wave there on the, the ocean, onto the shore like that. You push down, you slide, sometimes lift off as you're going. So you, you know, so you get a difference. And it's just gonna take some practice of doing this. Let's say I wanna create this little light edge there. Then I'll push down so I don't deposit very much and I'm pushing that light right here along the edge. See that little light edge right there, see? And if I want it to stand out more, I'll just lighten this up. Make sure you add the open medium. That's gonna give you transparency. There's other ways of doing this. You need to have something that is going to help your paint stay thick, but slightly transparent, because the white is very opaque. Now, in the Heritage line, we have a couple of mediums. We have a medium called Faux Medium. And as a matter of fact, if you put it into the search on my channel here, Faux medium, the waves. I show you how to do clouds with it, and I show you how to do the ocean waves with the faux medium. It's that way. I have another medium out here, which is thick extender. So this is this whole jar here. It's, it's been in here for over a year. Is extender that I've thickened up, and it's clear extender. It's a gel. It's really slow drying. Matter of fact, you mix this into the paint, and it'll stay wet for 24 or 30 hours. You have a long, long, long time to do it. And we have a medium that's a, it's an acrylic thickening agent that I use. See, this is a thickening agent here. And this, I don't want to get it dirty. I just added it. This is the tiniest. This is a, you don't, it just takes a tiny little bit of this. But if I add a little bit of extender here 
so this is a clear extender that I use and I add this thickening agent to it here like this see it starts to gel up see you just keep mixing it and mixing it and mixing it and all of a sudden you got this real thick gel and this is a very 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 slow drying gel here that you can add to any of your colors. You can mix it with this stuff here. It's all compatible. You can mix it back and forth. And now I have this real super slow drying gel. But what that does is that helps me give a little bit of transparency to my colors so they slide and they do oceans and stuff like that really well. Or if I want to make the edge of a wave, I start to thicken it up a little bit with less gel into my wave and I can put more of a stiff wave up here on top like this, see? So I can push that stiffer wave if I want to have a different wave or a little more color right up there up on the top. So there's all kinds of ways to do it, see? And it's a lot of fun when you use these, and see it all stays wet here, but when you use these gels. Now, I can control that even more. I can take a smaller brush, maybe a little bit of those blues and some of these violets, some of these other colors, put that in, see? And I can come back in and lift off and control the look of this wave even more just by lifting off like this, taking off. Maybe I want to put a softer little edge or manipulate a little bit of the wave right in there like that. So see, I can control that. It's really easy to control. I can push back and forth and get that interest in there, see? And every one of us will do it a little differently, but it's just so much fun to paint like that. So at, I first start out kind of thin, and then I'll thicken up a bit, pick up a bit more white, and then I'll come back and add the, like the foamy part of the wave. Let's go even a little heavier there. Maybe even more some pure white here. And create uh, a little bit more of an edge of that wave right there. Don't want to get it like too much like a storm. But, and then I can come in here with some dark here and kind of lift off that that I don't, that I uh, think may be too much. So maybe I'll come back here and lift that little edge off right there. I don't want to create a line, but I want to create some in and out interest to the waves here. Now you can look up there and copy it even more. We can come back here and put a, a darker color, if we really want to focus that viewer right in there, we can really bring in that nice dark color right in there and create that and create that movement and stuff right there. That's how you do it. And it's a heck of a lot of fun. But So I can come in here and maybe put in a little more dark color, lift off towards that wave right there. You know, push that in. And you, you control that. Sometimes I'll do this really, really quick so I get a nice casual edge to it. Here, let's add a little open medium. You can even add that gel I made up over here. It's all compatible. It'll all work here. Let's push that edge in right here that we see coming right back there. That's kind of interesting. Maybe a bit more white so we get some of that real light area right out there. And that just really helps pull that whole, that whole light, you know, in. I'll push and I'll blend. I'm going to blend that in just a touch. So I'll push. But how much you can lightly grab the edge here and pull out if you want to create some more motion to the wave. If I want to get that little dark edge that's there, that's kind of interesting on this one, I'll go ahead and just pick that right off, just like that, with a bit of dark right on my brush and take that wave off that way just like that so you see and you can create you can create all these waves here or you can just you know just like you see in the photo or you can just have some fun <laughs> like I like to do let's just create a little violet a little bit of the the blue kind of color here a lighter color here we'll push that in and out and grab a bit of that movement you can you could pull all the way up here and really create that rip tide, that pulling out tide there. You can make that V shape that you see there, you know. But I tend not to do too much because I'll go into a copy mode, and I don't like copying when I paint. So I kind of like 
create my own. Sometimes I'll tap out here like this to create little sparks of interest and other little things along the way. Let's put a little wave edge here, right like that. That little lightweight light edge there. Just use the tip of your knife there. Draw that little edge there like that. We can draw some of that down the beach here. Let's go a little more light, pick up a little more paint and just draw that right down the beach here like that. A little bit of an edge. You can see that would have a little more white foam. That's gonna be, you know, do I do that because it's gonna pull me away from there a little bit? Maybe, maybe a few little areas there of just a touch of the white foam. That's up to you. You know, just put that on, pull that, have a bit of fun right there. And uh, maybe we come out here. And if you want to make that skipping motion, you lighten the pressure on your, on your knife. Just drag across light pressure and you'll get that skipping motion that you'll see right in there, see? It's just practice doing all kinds of different things with your knife. That's where you're gonna get that, that kind of interest and stuff, you know? It's a lot of fun. So you can have more. You can put more waves out here like you see in that photo. Smaller little groups or larger groups. Maybe a bit more white out here. But this, and you can work on it as much as you want. Put in as much as you want. You know, take a bit of that white, like if we had back there, pull that back. Just slowly pull it back and the color will stay with you. If you pull fast, you'll get that skip. If you pull slow, the color will stay with you because the color stays on the knife. If you go fast, the color rolls off the knife. If you pull slow, the color stays on the knife. It's grabbing and staying on the knife. And of course, some of that's with how sticky and all that kind of stuff your paint is. And that's just gonna come with practice there too, with how much you can do there. But I'll skip a little bit here. See, I, I can skip real fast by pulling that real quick as I'll skip. And I'll skip a little bit here and through there. See how that skip goes in there when you do that. And I can soften that out. I can just pull through and soften some of that, that motion right there out. That's all up to you. So all kinds of things. So you can put that little wave there. That's a little bit distracting. I think I'll leave that. I think I'll do this little edge right here and uh, maybe just a bit of the soften there. So you've seen me do it with knife. You've seen me do it with brush. You've seen me do it with paper towel in some of the videos. I think I'll put a little bit and I want this paint to stay so I'll pull slow and see, I'll get a nice line of that paint by pulling slow, it won't skip there. So I'll push a bit of that right there, maybe um, another little bit of that white. In that photo, it has quite a bit of white right out there, so I'll push just a bit. That's a, I want that viewer to come right into that area. Maybe uh, real fine, let's bring the beach in just a touch more right along and through here. So I'll just touch and push a bit. That'll allow some of the, see how the, I roll. So I touch with that nice edge and then I'll roll to the flat to start to soften it out there. And maybe pick up like this on the edge of that knife and just touch a bit to create the edge of those waves right there. And it's really a lot of fun. So here you have a, a real quick what, in less than an hour, we're able to, uh, to practice. But working with the knife like that, I mean, your hands need to look like that. Working with that knife like that's a lot of fun, guys. And try the, the, the open medium. Try some of that gel, gelling that up. That's going to give you a different feel. The open medium is slightly more sticky, so it grabs. And so as it lays off the knife, will be a little bit different than as that gel lays off the knife. And then... If you go and you look for that faux medium that we have, faux medium is more slick. It slides onto the surface really easy. So it won't skip as well, but it does more beautiful like rolling waves and stuff like that. So 
And you can come back, like I say, and paint dark and do all that kind of good stuff there, you know, that, you know, whatever you want to do with that. But it, and you can, you can run this over to blur it and soften it. I like the optical effects of it. So when you get up close, you go, oh my God, that's terrible. But then you step back three, four feet, the thing looks, you know, pretty nice. You can put some clouds up there, but I think just for this one, a real quick seascape like this, is really kind of fun just for us to practice our knife and look at this i have enough to to get more stuff going but look at this see by putting that open medium all this all this wherever i mix this is is still really really wet and i can paint on that for quite a long time and you can get a lot of and practice you know you can get a lot of mixing or not mixing but modeling see this is what i like see that this is what i call the model color i'll pick this up i'll pull slow and so I, what happens is it does not blend as much, and I like it to the colors to cross each other like that. And that just makes beautiful beach, beautiful beach. But it has to have, look at, see, see how thick the colors are. See, they'll stand on the knife. So the colors I'm using here slide. I wish I could just let you all feel this. They just slide so well. It's exactly, exactly like painting with an oil, but yet you have the ability, you have the fun, non-toxic nature of the acrylics, and I can go get this dry, just put it under a hair dryer a little bit. And you can also take some of your thin extenders, some of your blue, I'll, I'll take some of this out here, soften some of that out, some of that wave out right there. Just pull back just a bit and create a little different movement to that wave. And so you, you know, so when I paint a wave, I paint it both what I call positive, pulling it out, and negative, which means painting the backside of it or the edges of it with a little bit of uh, the dark. Let's go just a touch darker. And you can, and practice and have fun. This is amazing fun. I can lift up right there, take a bit of that edge off. You can roll it slightly to make the wave look like it rolls. Okay, I can just push it like that, and that just looks like an ocean wave there. Okay. Looks like you know what you're doing, okay? So that's a real fast way, and they're really, really fun to paint. And as you can see, you can get a real nice look. You know, you got atmospheric perspective here, so this, this hill is becoming more like the atmosphere. This is going back. Now, I could probably run that uh, one more time, that light little bit there, but eh, I think it's okay. And... You got a nice hill, you got a nice, you know, leave some of these drag marks so you get some of that. I could put a little lighter. Yeah, let's let's do that real quick. Then I gotta call this because you, you get to a point, you play with it too much, Dave, and you're just gonna give yourself a problem. Let's put a little open medium and the knife, a little light, don't mix it up too well. Model it a bit here. And we're able to push that light sand. Yeah, that looks better that light sand skip it just a bit get some light sand maybe a bit more right up here yeah that stands up on top give it a little bit more of an undulating edge there to your beach yeah that does look better okay we'll stop it's all up to you and it's, it's a lot of fun guys and you know just get yourself some boards and play with that knife and those mediums the key is those mediums you're controlling the thickness and the wet edge of your paint and how fast you pull your knife, how flat you use your knife. Those are all important parts, okay? All right, so there you go. And don't forget to uh, click like, okay? Share the video, help us out with the channel. We're gonna use some of these techniques on a new floral. I mean, that's what we're coming up with, new floral. And then we have a wildlife. I have a beautiful drawing that I did this winter of because uh, I saw one of a trumpeter swan and I have it coming in and I want to paint that with you I think it's going to be a great a great great painting so um, we'll be painting that one more a as well too but uh, we have to go back to a floral and I want to use some of these techniques in a floral as well okay so you can see you know these techniques you use on like I, I say guys these techniques you use on portraits that you use on birds that you use on landscapes that you use on westerns and stuff, all these techniques, it's all part of art. And painting it into a Western, I cannot tell you, you know, I cannot emphasize what a Western will do to your painting skills. 
it'll change it because you're forced to paint something some of you don't like it but you're forced to paint and see something that is something that you don't normally want and always say oh how do you get so great painting roses you're going to practice 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 roses no i'm going to go paint a seascape or i'm going to go paint a western because it's going to cause my eye to be an artist to see something a little different practicing the same thing over and over and over and over again doesn't always make you a better artist at that you need to change up you need to learn shapes movements edges that's the key to it all right trust me it's true <laughs> okay i'll see you guys and thank you again for all the time my back is still up i'm under an hour so i'm good but uh, thank you for all your prayers and your concerns and your wonderful, wonderful comments. You wrote on all the videos for the last month while I was down. I really, truly appreciate it. And I thank every one of you from the bottom of my heart for talking me through. I read them every day and when I was flat on my back and couldn't do anything, you guys got me through it. So now we're going to get back to painting again. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. All right. I'll see you in a couple days. We'll do a floral. Or a swan. One of them. Okay, see ya.